You know variables, you know loops, but when you sit down to write a program, you don't know where to start. This is the screencast for you. This is Blank Editor. Welcome to Blank Editor, I'm Al Swigert. In this episode, we're going to be solving FizzBuzz in Python 3. Now, the actual variant of FizzBuzz that we're going to solve is from this website, projecteuler.net. This is a great website for finding practice programming problems. They're a bit mathy, but I still find that they're pretty engaging and really simple to go through. Let's click on the archives and go to the very first problem, multiples of 3 and 5. Now in the original FizzBuzz problem, you're expected to just loop through a bunch of numbers, printing out fizz whenever you have a multiple of 3, or buzz whenever you find a multiple of 5. This problem is worded a little bit different, but it hits all the same programming concepts. A lot of the Project Euler website problems give you a simplified example. In this case, it shows all the whole numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5 are these numbers, 3, 5, 6, and 9. You can see that 3, 6, and 9 are multiples of 3. That's 3 times 1, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and then 1 times 5 is 5, so 5 is obviously a multiple of 5. 10 isn't included. 10 is a multiple of 5. You can have 5 times 2 equals 10, but we're looking for numbers below 10. And then if you take the sum of these numbers, you get 23, and that's the final answer that they want, except for all of the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. So let's go ahead and start from a blank editor. Now let's think about what we need to do. Well, first we need to figure out a way of looping over um, all numbers from 1 to 1,000. So loop over numbers 1 to 1,000. I'm going to just save this as projecteuler1.py. And we're going to look at each of those numbers individually and uh, figure out which ones are multiples of 3 or 5. And then once we have all of those numbers, we're going to sum the multiples together and print it. We're going to run this figuring out uh, if a number is a multiple of 3 or 5 over every number from 1 to 1,000. So we're going to need some sort of loop. Now let's try out a for loop. We can just say for number in range 1 to 1,000. And we'll remember that in Python, loop iterating over this in a for loop will go up to but not including a thousand. So once we're inside this loop, we need a way of determining if this number is going to be a multiple of three or five. Now if you don't know how to do that, no problem. That's what Google's for. So find out if a number is a multiple. And then I'll just add Python there. And you can find some Stack Overflow answers or some other website to figure this out. This answer is pretty good, showing that if you have a number in, you can use the modulus operator and mod it by k, and you can figure out if in is a multiple of k because it'll have uh, in mod k of 0. Now, you might not remember the modulus operator. It's sort of like the remainder operator. That's not exactly what it is. I'm sure mathematicians will be very upset with me for calling it that. but if you try in the interactive shell 21 divided by 7, you're going to get 3.0. If you try 22 divided by 7, you're going to get 3 and some change. Now, 21 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 0, while 22 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 1. And if we want to get that 0 and 1 part, we can use the mod operator, which is the percent sign. So 21 mod 7 is 0, and 22 mod 7 is 1 because 22 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 1. This gives, a, this gives us that one part. Now we just need to check, well, okay, if number mod 3 is equal to 0, then that must mean that number is a multiple of 3. And we want to check if, if number is equal to 3. Also, we're, we need to check if the number is a multiple of 5. So we're going to do the same thing We'll combine this with uh, if it's a multiple of 3 or if it's a multiple of 5. So number mod 5 equals 0. So in that case, okay, well here, if the execution 
gets inside this if statement. We know that number is the multiple that we're looking for, so we should probably try to remember it maybe. I'm going to go back up to the very top. I'm going to create a blank list called multiples. And in here, we'll just add this number to that list. We'll append it to the end of the list. So once we're through all of this, then the multiples list should contain all of the multiples of 3 and 5. Now instead of printing this out, I'm going to do the right thing and not use print debugging, but instead use Python's logging module. It's just a simple two-line setup. And then we can just use the logging debug messages instead of printing it out. That way we can separate our program's real printed output from just the debug information. So I'm going to run this program. And here's that entire list. Now we can take a look at this, and it seems to be all the multiples of 3 and 5. This is a multiple of 3, it's a multiple of 5, multiple of 3, 3, and 5. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, uh, 3 times 6 is 18. And this seems to work out well. It goes all the way up to, but not including 1,000. So now that we have this list of multiples, we need to go through and sum it. Now Python does have the sum function, which allows us to just pass it a list and it will automatically sum all of those. But let's pretend we didn't have that because that makes it a little too easy. Let's instead just say, okay, um, sum of multiples equals zero. We'll start that off. And then we'll iterate over the list of multiples. So I'm just gonna say multiple single in the multiples list. We're gonna run this code for each of the multiples inside the multiples list. Sum of multiples equals sum of multiples plus that multiple. Now there's also an even easier way to do it that's kind of nicer uh, if we just change this to use the augmented operator. This just says add multiple to whatever value is already inside of sum of multiples and make that the new value. And then let's go ahead and print this out. Let's see if this is actually the solution we're looking for. I'm going to run this. And the answer we're getting is 233,168. That's the sum of all of these numbers. Let's go back to our Project Euler page. And that does indeed seem to be the right number. Now there's a slight improvement that we can make to this program. If you look right here, uh, we're sort of adding up the multiples all at the end, when really there's no reason we can't just do that inside this if statement. And there's no reason we have to keep a separate list. We don't need to know all of the multiples at once. We just need to know whenever we find them and we can just add it to our running sum. So let's move this up here just get rid of this code. And instead of having a list of multiples, we'll just keep track of the total because we don't actually care about the multiple numbers themselves. Now, Python's linter is complaining about these lines because I've just gotten rid of this variable. So I need to fix that. What we want here is sum of multiples has number added to it. And we no longer have that multiples list, so I'm just going to delete this. Let's run this again just to see if we continue to get the same number as before. Yep, 233,168. And this is much better because if we were going to say go over a billion numbers and then try to add them up, we would have a list of, you know, up to a billion integers stored in it. And that starts eating up a lot of memory. This way we have no list, and so we're not eating up tons of memory. So this solution scales much better than our previous solution does as far as memory requirements go. So this is the fearsome fizzbuzz problem. It's really not that difficult once you figure out the math side of it of being able to calculate if a number is a multiple of another number or not. Other than that, it's not that scary. It's just a single loop going over a range of numbers, determining if 
a particular number is a multiple of three or five, and then adding that to your total and then and just printing that out. Now the original FizzBuzz version of this has you just output the number or the words fizz and buzz. I think it's if a number is a multiple of three, you want to print fizz. And then if it's a multiple of five, you want to print buzz. But also if it's a multiple of three and five, you want to print fizz buzz. And just to ensure that you don't accidentally print out these outputs as well as this one, we can just make this an else if and make this an else if. That way only one of these print function calls is executed. And the last case, we would just print out what the number was. So this is the original fizz buzz problem. But it really is all the same concepts that we've covered in this program. So that's it, we've gone from a blank editor to conquering the fearsome fizzbuzz problem using our programming concepts. I'll see you next time.